and welcome back. This is ninth grade honors English, Perkiomo Valley School District, week five, the week in review. So I've split out poetry and it's in a new video that I'm going to do every week. So if you're interested in the poems that we did this week and why we did them, please check out that video. There's a link down below for that. So this week, last Thursday, uh, one of the things that we did was I asked students to take a look at the work they had done in our writing training camp. They had just gotten feedback from their peers the day before, and so we started in on revising, on making choices about whether or not we were going to follow their, their peers' suggestions or whether they were simply going to say, no, I meant what I meant and I'm just going to stay with what I have. So they're making choices as a writer. They had guidance on how to make those choices and that's what we did. And then on the on Friday, on Thursday, uh, after they were done that, what I had them do was we're using a digital portfolio called Seesaw. It's a free app, it's online, and Seesaw allows the whole class to gain access to each other's work. It also allows students to put up audio and video content. So we're using it as a way for students to talk about what they revised, why they revised it, and to put the revisions up there so other people can see it. So I had them add the revisions at the end of class on Thursday for the writing training camp packet one. We're going to go through, I'm going to give them feedback on their work there. They're going to get a single point feedback form so they know how they can improve even further if they want to. And then from there, we moved into Friday. I was out Friday, so there was an independent reading day on Friday. So then we're into Monday. And on Monday, I had to apologize because it was sort of a boring, it was one of those days that teachers sometimes need, maybe once a month, to sort of just go in and say, here's where we are, here's where we have been, here's where we're going, these are the documents that you should have, these are the things that we need to be looking towards. So I had them uh, take a look at some work that I returned to them and to set up some more information on Seesaw. I returned a piece of writing from a couple of weeks ago called Who Am I as a Reader? Who Am I as a Writer? They had to take a look at the feedback that I gave them and then on Seesaw they had to put up their plan for revision. So looking at the feedback form and there's a link to the feedback form that I'm using down below. I'll get to that in just a moment. And then they had to decide, well, how am I going to move forward with this piece and improve it? Because for me, learning is not about grades. I didn't put any grades on those things. Learning is all about growth. And so this is a, a chance for them to grow as writers, to think in more writerly ways, given the feedback from someone who is a somewhat mildly accomplished writer. At least I at least like to think of myself that way. On Tuesday... What we did is we started in with um, our poems uh, for Tuesday. It was uh, early memory, and I talk about that in the other video. But on Tuesday, what I did is I started to get them ready for this next unit, which is called This I Believe. It's a unit based on personal essay writing, and it comes out of the famous radio program by Edward R. Murrow where he had everyday Americans and famous Americans write short three minute long radio essays on things that they believed in. So this was revised by NPR. There's a link down below to their website for this and it ran for a few years in the late 2000s, the aughts as they say. And when I heard that and then I found that there was a document, a unit that you could use for this. I started it two years ago in my class and have had a lot of success with students writing some really great work. So essentially they're writing personal essays and one of the things I like to think about as myself in a classroom, as a teacher, is I'm not about you know opening skull caps and pouring knowledge on and expecting that it's going to work its way down into the crevices of the brain and sit there and somehow be absorbed because we know that doesn't work. Uh, we know that you know, lecture and direct instruction is one of, it's not the worst way, but is one of the worst ways to really get students to learn things. It's very passive. 
So what I like to use is a little bit of cognitive dissonance. It's another way of saying I like to think of myself as a problematizer, which is to say I get students to think about what they know, and then I institute a different way of looking at it that really problematizes what they think they know. So here's an example. What I did with them on Tuesday was I had them write in their free writing journals, I had them write a definition of what an essay is. And then we listened to three definitions in each class. And then I had them react to the word essay. So when I wrote the word essay on the board, I said, okay, how do you feel about this? What are your experiences with essays? Um, do you like them? Do you not like them? Why? Where did you succeed? And where did you fail? And how do you see yourself as an essay writer? I do this because I know that for many of those students, they're going to come to me and they're going to say, I really don't like essays. I would very much rather write about what's in my head and the things that I want to write about. And that's natural, I think. It's uh, not a put down on the essay. It might be a put down on how we teach the essay. And that's where I come in with a problematization, if you will. So several years ago, I went to Bard College's Institute for Writing and Thinking, where I have been many times. Links down below. It's an awesome place. If you're an English teacher, go. I don't care where you live. Go to at least one weekend workshop on writing and thinking or writing to learn because it will change your life. So I went to Bard and I went for a whole week and I stayed on campus. I was a college student again. And I was taking a class called Inquiry to the Essay. And the first thing we did in that class after some introductory writing was we got a, a paper and the paper had the entire list, almost the entire list, of the Oxford English Dictionaries entire definition for essay, both, both the noun and the verb, because there's a verb, students don't know that. Um, and we were to go through and we were to sort of like write about what's something we notice about these definitions, what's something we wonder about these definitions, and what's an idea or something we think about these definitions. And the interesting thing is that when you look at all of these definitions for essay, what immediately becomes clear is that the definition we currently operate under, the modern definition of essay, doesn't really fit very well with all the definitions that came before. Because the majority of the definitions read something like a trial, a first attempt, a taste of, a rough draft even, and um, a, an attempt or an experiment to prove something. So they all work at the level of this very like laid back, I'm just trying it out, I want to see what happens. This is what it means to essay or to assay is another way to, uh, that's the A-S-S-A-Y, but both words are derived similarly. So they read these definitions. That's why, I mean, I read those definitions when I was at Bard and I was like, what, this is essay? Oh man, so world changing experience for me. So I wanted to bring that to my students and because that had problematized my own understanding of essay and I want that to happen in my classroom because those moments when we think we know something and someone shows us something different, that's a key learning experience. So I showed them definitions and then I asked them to write about, okay, how do you feel about essay now? What surprised you about this? What do you notice? What do you think? What do you wonder? And then after that, I sent them out and I had them share their ideas. And I wanted the com them to come back to me with, what are some things you hope about essays in this class? And what are some things that you're still worried about or that you still wonder? So this was a great almost two-day exercise, Tuesday and Wednesday, really, exercise. And right now where I have them is they're thinking something different is going to happen class with essays. Something that some of them said they hoped for was that they'd be able to engage in more interesting topics. And of course my response is, well where do the most interesting topics come from? And the answer always is, well, they come from us. We have our own ideas that we want to explore. And that's something we rarely teach students how to do, which is how to come up with their own ideas, rather than just using writing as a way to demonstrate what you have learned, 
Here, write this essay on this book and tell me what you've learned about themes in this book. And so I want them to come up with and know how to come up with their own topics because when you're writing from your own center of interest, writing is that much easier. So that's what we've done so far this past week in ninth grade. I hope to see you next week and I hope to have some samples of memories and this I believe essays, at least rough drafts. See you next week.